Here he is hitting at 281. Playing at shortstop tonight because they didn't particularly want Desi Relaford to face a knuckleball pitcher. He can foul up the hitter's swing, especially a young hitter. Arias has been around, so he can handle facing it. He's faced uh, Wakefield a couple or four times previous, also. Helps a little bit, I guess. Two for four. Yeah. There's Desi. Make it three for five for Alex Arias. Well, the Phillies have been hitting the knuckleball, all of them singles, but they have been hitting it. The fourth hit given up by Wakefield. There, it sits up a little bit. See how it starts up about waist time, breaks down to the knees. That's the one you can hit when it's that one and above. When it starts down at the knees, it's tough for hitters to lay off, but that's the one that that will get hitters out. One ball and no strikes to Doug Glanville. He walked his first time up. And Clark and Tommy Gannon from Philadelphia here tonight. Give him a fastball, got it over 1 1. And the Kane family up from Philadelphia to visit some old Philly friends that live here now, the Kellys. All rooting for the Phillies. Bouncing ball to third base. Ballington to Benjamin. Relay just in time. Dug out nicely by Mo Vaughn. So Glanville rarely hits into a double play. Grounds into an around the horn twin killing. Especially for a Five to four to three double play. But Valentin even double clutched a little bit on that. Mobon does a nice job picking it out. You see, Benjamin makes the turn. Mobon picks it clean. Greg Jeffries lost a fly ball into right center field, and it's flagged by Darren Bragg, and that'll retire the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, and none left. We go to the bottom of the second. Phillies three and Boston one. Up three one. John Ballantin will lead it off. Hitting at 245. It's pretty well hit to center, but Glanville is there, makes the catch. He's shilling the last two games. It's 16 innings, only six hits, one earned run. That was just that solo home run to Jason Kendall in his last start. He's really, he stepped it up these last couple games. Scott Hatterberg hitting a 258. Red Sox just traded Jim Layritz. He was a catcher. They've got Jason Veritek behind Hatterberg, so. Felt like they didn't didn't need Layers. They traded him to San Diego. Ground ball. Lewis backhands. Throws out Hatterberg. Two down. Here's what they did. They traded Layers and Ethan Faggot at an outfielder for Carlos Reyes, Dario Veras, and Mandy Romero. Called up Billy Ashley from. Paul Tuckett, he used to be with the Dodgers. He probably will play against left-hand pitching. And Layritz, Layritz wasn't real happy here. He wanted to play more, as he'd been talking about it for a while. Base hit by Mike Benjamin, who came in the game. Darren Bragg. The right fielder, Darren Bragg. Bragg is hitting at 271. Third hit given up by Schilling. This one's foul back and out of play. I sent along our very best to Joanne Clayton, wife of our good buddy Skip Memory Lane Clayton. Joanne will be undergoing surgery next week, and our thoughts and prayers are with Joanne, certainly. 
One ball and one strike. Miss two and one the count to Darren Bragg. We're in the bottom of the second. Phillies lead it 3 1. Fouls this one out of play down the left field side. Two balls and two strikes to Bragg. Struck him out with a splitter. Four strikeout for Kurt Schilling, and that'll be it for the Red Sox in the second. No runs a hit, no errors, one left. We go to the third, 3 1 Phillies. Two, and then two more at Veterans Stadium, and Big Mo Vaughn will bat. Man, you can, where well, our broadcast location is, you can see how he stands right on top of the plate and just dares you to come in there. That's what really helped him. He'll, he'll get up there. If you can get it up on his hands, he'll fight the ball off. Which is what he did. And he's so strong. And there is a fastball up and in up by Schilling right there. But and you don't have a lot of room for error in there. <laughs> yeah, and he fought one off in the first inning, Andy, and, and flared yep. that ball into center. They, oh, now look at this where this guy stands. You talk about fearless. Of course, he's got all that armor on that front arm, too, the way a lot of these guys do nowadays. And he takes it the other way. He pitches out over the plate. The guy is not only big, he's a good hitter. Two for two is Mo Vaughn. Comes in the seventh leading hitter in the American League at 326, and he's added to those numbers. Well, that ball's, ball's up there. It looks like one of that in. He's just so strong. He will not steal a base, though. I don't think. Has no attempt so far this year as O'Leary, the left fielder, fouls it back. Happy birthday to Joan Bell from Akasson, Delaware, who's 81. Also at the ball game tonight, our good friends Debbie and Eric Van Norden and Kathy Donovan and her mom from Dr. Rich Vasallo's office up in the Northeast. A lot of Phillies fans at this one tonight. There is a bunch, as you can tell by all the notes. <laughs> Got some pretzels here, too, from Redding. I haven't seen him. Marge and Bill Sturm from Reading, the Pretzel City, it says here. Fought off into center field, a base hit. A back-to-back -back hits here by the Red Sox in the fourth inning. Schilling made a real good pitch there in O'Leary, and he gets a base hit to center field. Well, he's trying to bust them in. These guys, they like to get those arms extended. They can hit the ball out to left field. That ball's up and in. He doesn't hit it good at all, but these guys are strong enough. They got enough power they can... Fight it in the outfield. John Valentin, the third baseman, will bat. He fly to center his first time up. Valentin's another Seton Hall product. What a good baseball program. Also, Georgia Tech. See some Georgia Tech guys here tonight, like Nomar Garcia Parra. Phillies play the infield a double play depth. No outs. Runners on first and second. They lead it three to one. We're in the fourth. And a fastball misses. Schilling struck out the side in the first inning. One in the second and one in the third for a total of five. 162 on the year up his major league leading total. Ball one to Valentin. The on-deck batter of the catcher, Scott Hatterberg, a left-handed batter. That one's fouled off just above us. Back down onto the playing field. Derwood Merrill, the home plate umpire, was an umpire in the California League when I signed. 19, I signed in 71, but 72 I was in the league. Luke Klimchuk was a manager. And this is how Derwood is. He, Luke Klimchuk went out to argue. He was, he was red hot. He goes out to argue with Derwood. And he says, you got to be blind. You miss that. You can't see it. There's no way. You better... You know, you got to be blind. Sir would just real calm. He looks at him and goes, Lou, are you an optometrist? 
who said he wanted to start laughing? He couldn't argue anymore. He just walked off the field. Durbin's one of those fun guys. He, he enjoys what he's doing. Has fun down there. High two and one. He just wrote a book. In fact, uh, Ken Griffey did the forward for him. Is that in right? That book, yeah. And I can't remember the name of it, but it, it, it's just out like about two months. Good pitch by Schilling on the outside corner, two and two. Schilling seems to be okay with Merrill so far tonight. I yeah. mean, you know, he, he seems to be calling a pretty good game for him. And and that's very important to Kurt Schilling because he wants to stay out of the middle of the plate and he'll throw in and out and he needs you know umpires to make those calls. Pretty good swing at that one by Valentin. He fouls it back. Well, she'll got a little bit too much of the plate and a little up a little too high on that pitch. Pretty good pitch. Valentin had a pretty good swing. When you see that ball go straight back like that, that's when you know the hitter is right on it. Yeah, and a lot of times he'll go away from the pitch. But then in this case, you go to 3-2 if he misses with it. So see what he does. And some confusion as they may be thinking the same thing we're just talking about. Or what they want to do here because he had that good swing at the pitch and went straight back. And now Schilling wants Lieberthal to come out. They just cannot get together on what they want to throw here. And they will talk about it. You don't want to make a mistake here. I mean, you don't have to talk about the lack of run support for Schilling, although they got him three in the first, but you don't want to make a mistake. You want to be on the same page, Lieberthal, it's important he goes out there that they get together, talk about what they want to do, what's going to be the best pitch here. Chuck Cotier and Terry Francona, John Vukovic in the Phil's dugout. Now they're ready to go. Two balls, two strikes. Base hit up the middle. Movon being waved or oh no he is that they stopped him at third. Wendell Kim didn't want to take any chances. So the bases are loaded with nobody out on three straight singles. Mo got a decent jump on that and I thought they're going to send him. Yeah I, I wasn't I was watching Glanville on a play. Here he wants his fastball and just doesn't get it in there good. But that ball I mean, Glanville's fairly deep and he had a long ways to go. It's I guess with nobody out, Wendell Kim didn't want to take a chance as Jimmy Williams thinks about it. So the Phillies play the infield a double play depth again. They gladly give up a run for two here, and Hatterberg takes a strike. He grounded the second his first time up. Scott Hatterberg batting seventh. Of course, we have the DH tonight, so position players throughout the lineups. And there's the young catcher with the bases loaded. Consecutive singles, three in a row actually, to start this inning. Bases loaded, nobody out for Boston. And he fouls that back. 0 oh, 2. Mike Benjamin, a right handed batter on deck. Hatterberg and Jason Varitek catching here for Boston. They just traded Jim Layritz to San Diego last night. Veritex a switch hitter and had a burger cost a left handed batter. Oh and two the pitch strike three call on the outside corner he didn't like it but Schilling picks up a big strikeout his sixth of the game one out. That is a big strikeout there because now you got the double play you got the force at home I mean he had the force at home before this fastball Lieberthal see how we bends his glove down when he catches it he kind of bends his glove down that's framing it that's making that pitch look to the umpire make it look a little lower than it really is. Mike Benjamin got a base hit his first time up played with the Phillies for a little while it was injury plague for the most part when he's with the Phillies. Strike called to him. And Lou Merloni now the second baseman here Merloni has a slight leg problem so Benjamin playing tonight. Mark Lemke still on the disabled list. 
That's been a problem for them this year, trying to fill that position. Benjamin, fly ball, very shallow right field. Here comes Bobby Abreu on. He makes the play. Vaughn will have to stay there. Crowd's getting all over Wendell Kim, but Bobby Abreu, they don't know. that uh, you know He's one of the best in the National League as far as throwers go. And that would not be a good move for Wendell Kim to send him. So there are two away now. That would have been Abreu's 11th assist Number because 56. that... That ball was thrown perfectly. You see, as soon as he catches it, Mo Vaughn breaks to the plate. He's got to go hard. Bobby Abreu, perfect strike to Rico Bronia. I don't, I don't think there been any chance for Mo Vaughn to score on that ball. So now there are two outs, and Darren Bragg, the big man in the inning for Schilling. As the bases were loaded with nobody out, now there are two outs. Bragg struck out his first time up. How about a right fielder batting ninth? He's got pretty good numbers, too. Yeah. 15 doubles. And he's made two great plays in the outfield, although he trapped one of them. Schilling is getting some pitches from Merrill. That pitch may have been a little bit outside, and it was called a strike. Well, Derwood's been consistent with everything. He's... He's calling strikes back there. And it's a lot easier for an umpire if you're making pitches, too. You show him you can do it. Well, Schilling will throw it out there if he can get it. That one came in too high, and it's 2-1 to Darren Bragg, formerly with the Seattle Mariners. Hit well to left field. Jeffrey's going back. It's going to hit the wall, and two runs will score. And we have a tie game, and that Darren Bragg has knocked in two and taken some runs away from the Phillies. So Schilling looked like he might get out of the inning. He doesn't. A double for Bragg. 27 runs batted in. It's 3-3. I think he wanted to stay away from him. When he got behind 2-1, and one, he knew he had to throw a strike, and that ball... It's low, but left-handers liked that ball down there. Got a little bit of the plate. Jeffries goes back. I mean, that ball was hit pretty well. Jeffries would have had no chance, even going back more to the wall on that. It was hit too hard, and he wouldn't have had any chance to make the catch. It actually played it off the wall very well. So the Phillies with a 3 to nothing lead in the first inning. The Red Sox got one in the first, now two in the fourth, and have tied it. As Jimmy Williams, the manager, looks on, former manager of the Toronto Blue Jays, third base coach for Atlanta, there's Terry Francona. Runners at second and third, two outs in a tie game for Darren Lewis, who has struck out twice. That's a pretty good eight-hole hitter they have. There's Schilling at 54 pitches. Great ball strike ratio. Look at that. That's three to one. Better than. Strike call to Lewis, who played a lot of years for the San Francisco Giants, has bounced around since then. And he's led off the last 37 games here for Boston. He's always been a great outfielder, but his hitting's starting to come around and get more experience. And... Bunts it. Is it fair? Rico, no, no, it just went foul, says Derwood Merrill. Brown, you tried to get on it and get it before it went foul, and it just crossed the line. Strike two. And see, before that ball gets to the first base line, before it gets to the first base bag, it's the home plate umpire's call. That ball just trickles across foul territory. Derwood definitely let them know it's a foul ball. Yeah, he made a good call on it. The home plate umpire down the line emphatically making the foul call. So Lewis back with another shot. No balls and two strikes on him. Oof. Close. One and two. Schilling with six strikeouts so far. Two outs here in the fourth inning. Couple of runs in for Boston. Comes back inside and misses two and two. On deck batter Reggie Jefferson, the DH. He's a left-handed hitter. There is Jefferson, originally with the Cincinnati Reds. 
Line drive to right and a base hit. One run scores. Here's another runner being waved around. The throw to the plate is late. And the Red Sox get two more on the single by Darren Lewis and lead it 5-3. to three. All with two outs. They just came in with the fastball to Lewis. He got him last time up after coming in with the fastball, came back in again. Here he gets, oh, that, that didn't look like a fastball. It looked like it might have been a splitter. He threw kind of hard. A lot of times you throw that splitter too hard, it's going to stay up. Abreu with the strong throw, but he's just up the line with it. Lewis taking second on the play. And now Jefferson, the batter, and he hits it foul down the third baseline. Look at the crazy carom that ball takes. Rocky Rowe had to move down there, a third base umpire. There's Rocky Rowe. That's why the infielders have to go back and help on those balls that might take a carom like that off the wall. Yeah, they've got to be alert out there. Fouled off. Well, you come play these American League teams and they go to hacking. <laughs> they are used to offense in this league and they swing. So Schilling, who had a three to nothing lead, now trails along with his ball club five to three here in the fourth inning as the Red Sox have scored four in the inning with two outs. And there's Darren Lewis on at second after the two run single. That's hit well to left. That ball is going to hit the wall. Come back to Jeffries. Another run will score. It'll be a long single for Jefferson. Six to three in favor of the Red Sox. The Phillies are playing a really hot team this week in these guys. They're 16 games over 500, and they are smoking the ball. They've won nine out of their last 11. It's a fast ball. See Lieberthal reaching over the middle of the plate, and he just got that uh, too much of the plate there. And Wade Boggs and Freddie Lynn, some of those guys used to play pepper with that wall there and get singles on a lot of balls. They feel they should have doubles on, but because it's a high wall, He's held to a single a good play by Jeffries. It's a lot of runs for Schilling to give up. He gave up seven earned runs in that game against the Cubs at Wrigley Field when the Phillies made their first trip out there. And that probably is his high for the year. He gave up seven runs against Florida, but only four were earned. Gave up seven against Cincinnati. No, that's that's hits. No, seven has got to be it. Seven, seven is his highest. Yeah, Chicago. Against Chicago. That's it. I mean, that's his high for the year. And only gave up four one time, and other than that, it's been three twice and right. zero, one, and two. Strike call. So the Red Sox have batted around, and all this damage came after it looked like Schill might get out of the inning. Three straight hits and then two outs, and now they have gotten three more hits. And the pitch to Garcia Parra is inside. He's tripled and scored a run and lined out to Jeffries. He's hit it hard twice tonight. And one of those pitches Schill had. Darren Lewis 0 and 2 threw him a good fastball outside part that Dorward Merrill had been calling. Looked like still didn't get the pitch. There's a strike call. So the Phillies off to a quick start tonight with a three run lead. Now trail by three. Have to start all over again. Grounded towards short. Arias will go to first. That'll do it. But the Red Sox score. Five runs in the inning on six hits and leave one. And they take a three run. Swing and a miss by O'Leary. Takes a seat after that big rip. He has struck out, singled, and scored. Man, these guys swing hard. Well, he obviously doesn't get cheated here. That was a high fastball, and he tried to come out of his shoes. That's good. I mean, you may have to come inside once in a while when a guy swings well, that hard at you. You see a guy swing like that and fall down, you saw where that next pitch was. Sure. And there was a reason for it, believe yeah. me. You've got to come buzz a guy once in a while after they have a swing like that. And the pitch is a little outside, two and one. Leary, the left fielder. Well to right field. Bobby Abreu going back. It is a home run for Troy O'Leary. His 14th home run of the year. It's seven to three now in favor of Boston.
Well, he looked like he got out front of that one a little bit. It might have been a splitter that was up high. Either that or a slider that he just got out in front of, but the ball, the ball looked like it was up. Yeah, I think that was a splitter, but she'll just got it up too high. You see it comes down, hits that railing back there. Bobby just ran out of room in right field. Valentin the batter, and the pitch is outside. He has flied out, singled, and scored a run. Seven runs now scored by Boston after the Phillies scored three in the first inning. Valentin high in the air to left field. Jeffries plays it and looks up, and it's gone. It's into the netting for another home run. That is the ninth of the year for Valentin. Back to back go the Red Sox, and they lead it eight to three. Well, this ball is not hit that well, but that's such a short porch in left field. You got to hit the ball up. You can hit a line drive that would be a home run in a lot of parts, and not here. But you hit a pop up here, a fly ball. You get it up high enough, it'll drop right down into that net in left field, and that's exactly what he did. Well, with no DH, you don't always have to get your pitcher out of there. Nobody warming up yet for the Phillies, but Schilling has given up more runs now in this game than any other game this year. Well, Darren Winston now beginning to throw in the Phillies bullpen. Yeah. Yep. Now they get somebody out. There he was. And this one's outside. She'll just start off so strong at first three innings. I mean, he had great command and. Yeah, and you think about the five runs they scored with two outs in the fourth. I mean, yep. he was almost out of that inning without anything. And then since then, it's been a problem. And there's Valentin who just hit that fly ball home run. Pop up, playable. Rolling and Arias. Arias, the shortstop, makes the play two outs. As Hatterberg is now 0 for 3. Maxwell House night at the vet Friday June the 26th when the Phils host the Devil Rays that's it's Friday night bring an unopened can of Maxwell House coffee you can redeem it for a free box seat to the game fans must redeem the cans in the center field parking area one can per person then Maxwell House will donate all the cans to fill abundance for additional information call 463 1000 Mike Benjamin takes a strike call he singled and flied out Craig Steer from Valley View Pennsylvania up here with Dick Cook from Blairstown, New Jersey. Watching the game here at Fenway Park. They enjoyed it a lot earlier than this part. As the Phillies had an early lead. Fouled back just off to our left and out of play. Gives you an idea of the distances they just announced on those homers of what happens here in this ballpark. As Schilling's 0 2 is swung on and missed by Benjamin. He didn't think he swung it. We'll give you those distances later. Two runs, two hits, both homers. No errors and nobody left on base. It's 8 3 now in favor of Boston. Bronia leads it off for the Phillies, followed by Mike Lieberthal and Bobby Abreu. Phillies with three in the first, shut out since then, as they trail at eight to three here in the sixth inning. Rico has a sacrifice fly and a run batted in. Wakefield's knuckleball is pop foul out of play left side. The fan it's going to get booed up there for missing an easy pop up. Bronia pops one up down the third baseline. Valentin will have room one away. Stuff the experts. Trivia question and answer other than the Phillies. For what three organizations did Kurt Schilling play? From Matthew D'Souza of Yardley, Pennsylvania. The answers are? Well, I got to guess Boston, of course, right. Baltimore, and Houston. That is correct. Thank Matthew for that question. I didn't know if I was going to get the dong there. I was waiting for it. You got dong, yeah. all right. There's Kurt Schilling, who broke in here with the Boston Red Sox. He was their second round pick in January of 1986. As Mike Lieberthal looks at a knuckleball high, he has singled, knocked in a run, and gotten on on an error by Valentin, the third baseman. The distance is on the homers. O'Leary's 406, 322. 
for Valentin. That's all that went. And that's that's straight away left maybe a, a hair towards left center. And if you hit it 320 feet, that ball was five feet deep in the into the net. That tells you right there you get a, you hit the ball up in the air high to left field. You got a pretty good chance of hitting a home run. The green monster, the fabled green monster here at Fenway Park. Strike call to Lieberthal, a fastball from Wakefield. As he was taking all the way in a 3 0 pitch. Well, he's trying to get something going now as they need five to tie. When we're in the sixth inning. And he fouled that one back. Hitters jammed themselves on his fastball. Yeah, they, they sit back and wait and wait and wait, and all of a sudden it's too late. But he's one thing he's doing is he's changing speeds on his knuckleball, and that's with the knuckleball you get about four different pitches. You throw one hard, it doesn't move as much. One slow that goes straight down. One that you can run into the hitter, away from the hitter. There's one goes away, and he walks it. The Lieberthal walks. Wakefield was way off with his control in the first inning. He walked Landville and hit Rowland, and that's the first base runner the Phillies have had since Lieberthal. Got on in the error by Valentin in the third. Yeah, outside of that error, it's 13 guys that, that he's gotten out. Here's a Bray who fly to left and hit that ball to right, on which it appeared Darren Bragg trapped it. Although he was given credit with a for a catch, that would have scored a run for the Phillies. And the pitch is over. Move on is playing off Lieberthal a little bit at first base, trying to take the hole away from a Bray who. Red Sox have that luxury with a five run lead. There you see big first baseman. And Wakefield steps off. It's one or the other. They're either going to play off him or <laughs> play on him and he might throw over. Yeah, I mean, that's. All you got to do is look at the notes. He's not. Lieberthal doesn't run. Right. Well, I think knuckleball. Uh, well, some pitchers get into a habit anyway, but knuckleball pitchers are really aware of runners on because they, they run so much yeah. on them. But with the base runner like Lieberthal, you just want to make sure he's stopped there. Breu takes it low. Watch him when he throws that knuckleball. Of course, that's a fingertip pitch. And a really difficult pitch to throw, but it's a career saver for certain guys and certainly for Wakefield. Well, he can throw 150, 160 pitches in a game and, and, and be okay. Fastball misses three and one. So he's gone three balls on the last two hitters. Walk Lieberthal behind Bobby three and one on deck is Kevin Jordan the DH. So he's had more trouble with men on base obviously that first inning. That's a secret get that leadoff guy on each inning would be nice. Of course you always want to do that. Walk. Nope. Strike call three and two. Sorry Durwood. Well Bobby Abreu thought it was a ball too. He started to throw his bat. And wisely held on to it. There's a base hit for Abreu. Lieberthal will stop at second, so the Phillies have something going here in the sixth inning. Two on with one out for Jordan, who has an RBI single off the glove of the shortstop Garcia Parra, and he's also grounded out. A 3 2 pitch. He throws him a fastball. Bobby's right on it. Right up the middle. The designated hitter, Kevin Jordan. The Phillies need somebody to pop one over that short porch and left, get him right back into it. Mark Lewis on deck. He will follow Jordan. And a knuckler is low for ball one. Wakefield could not get his knuckle ball over in the first inning. At least he didn't get it called very often. But except you have to supply the power too if you're going to hit one out. But one thing, if it's down low, it's tough to hit the ball out. If he gets it up and it straightens out a little bit. High fly ball, left field. O'Leary at the wall. It is off the wall. Lieberthal scores. Here comes Abreu. Vukovic waved him, and then Bobby stopped. So the Phillies get a run out of it as Kevin Jordan hits one high up on that wall. One run scores. Runners at second and third and one away. I don't know whether Abreu lost Vukovic there or not, but John was waving him. Well, he comes around third. You see, it looks like a uh, 
slider, which I don't, I don't believe he was. It was a knuckleball, but it broke like a slider. He got that ball up, and that's the one thing you talk about. You know, you, you got to elevate it. That ball was close to going out. But Abreu's coming around there. John Vukovic was waving him, and all he's got to do, he's got nothing to look at but John Vukovic. Bobby Abreu now has hit safely in 10 straight, as you see Vuk talking to him down there. And Joe Kerrigan from Philadelphia, the pitching coach for the Boston Red Sox, out there having a talk with Wakefield. So the Phillies trying to claw their way back into this one as they get a left-hander and a right-hander up. Number five. The second baseman, Mark Lewis. John Wazden, the right-hander. And the left-hander is Ron Mayhay, as in Mayday. Kurt Schilling looking on, hoping his ball club and getting back in this one. That's ripped to left, and it's right at him. Bobby Abreu is going to tag and score on the play. They're going to appeal it to see if he left too soon. No, says the third base umpire, Rocky Rowe. So Mark Lewis will get a sacrifice fly and a run batted in. Phillies have two back, and it's now 8-5. to five. That's a good job by Abreu because as soon as that ball was hit, a lot of guys have their instinct is to just break for the plate. He watch him, he hits it. He gets right back to the bag. O'Leary with not a real strong arm and left. Abreu easily scores there. Good job by Abreu and by Lewis to get him in. Kevin Jordan stays at second. And the pitch to Arias is outside. Alex has a single. He's also struck out. So the Phillies have answered back with a couple of runs here in the sixth inning and trail 8-5. It seems like they get somebody on. Wakefield has more trouble from the stretch. Pop foul out of play. Yeah, and it's not like he takes a big wind up or anything either. He just no. when he does work from what is his wind up, he just rocks back a little bit and flips that thing up there. Well, we've seen these guys come back time and time again. In fact, one of their better comebacks is when Shield got hit around early in Chicago. That ball's hit well to left center field. Open spaces. Jordan will score. Arias on his way to second. It's 8 6 now in favor of the Red Sox as the Phillies have picked up three here in the sixth inning. Give Alex a double, his fourth of the year, and his 11th run batted in. Well, it's the knuckleball here again. And you see that ball. See where Hatterberg reaches up for it, reaching up waist high. Alex just drills it out there. Darren Lewis does a good job playing it off that wall. It's an advantage playing in Fenway. Outfielders know which way the ball is going to go when it hits this fence. Arias is now number six, the center fielder. Four for number six eight lifetime eight. off Wakefield. One of the reasons why he's playing tonight. And that's going to be it for Wakefield. Here comes Jimmy Williams, the manager to the mound. He's going to make a pitching change here in the sixth inning. The well, Phillies have gotten themselves right back into this one. With Glanville, the batter will probably be Wazden. Most runs Wakefield has allowed since he allowed six and seven and a third innings on April 7th in Anaheim at the start of the year. So the Phillies have gotten to him pretty well here tonight and want to keep it going against the bullpen. We'll be right back. When you dive for a ball, some bad things can happen. That's what happens to Valentin here. See Jeffries leading off. Now he dives for this. It would have just been a single in the hole, but he deflects it. Gets Jeffries to go to third, and here comes the truck around second. All body is that throw by O'Leary, and that's why he threw it high, because he didn't use his legs, trying to rush the throw to second. A double for Roland, and Ron Mayhay is the new pitcher coming on for the Boston Red Sox. Mayhay appearing in his 16th game, 1-0 with a 3-6-3 ERA, and Bronya greets him with a drive that's going to score a run. It's caught by Bragg, tagging as Jeffries. The throw is coming in to second base. Roland moves up to third, so Bronya gets the job done against the left-hander. Moves them all up, and it's now an 8-7 to seven game. Sacrifice fly by Bronya, his second of the night. And the Phillies congratulating Rico as he knocks in another run, and <laughs> Bobby Abreu comes stumbling out of the dugout. He's okay. Good job by Rico because he gets two things done there. He gets a run in, and he, of course, with Rowan, you know he's going to get the third. This Mayhay was a position player at one time, and uh, they turned him into a pitcher. He was an outfielder. Turned him into a pitcher full time in 96. The infield comes in now for Mike Lieberthal, who is single, lived on an air, and walked. 
And he's 17 in the third inning, 17 hits, 12 strikeouts, too many walks as you see, 10 walks. Two balls and no strikes to Lieberthal. Phillies who come back in so many games now trying to come all the way back from eight to three. And it's now eight to seven with the tying run at third base. He's a dirty uniform player. Frankie C brought some extra drawers for him. Three balls and no strikes. Green light here with a left hand hitter due up next. You bet with that wall inviting out there okay. in left field. All right. Popped him up. So that'll be out number two in the inning, a pop-up to Mike Benjamin. Just, see, that's just Mike Lieberthal gets a 3-0 green light. The manager shows confidence in you, and he jams himself on this. That pitch is in on him, and he pops it up to the right side. You know, it's a hard game down there, but when you get a 3-0 green light, you have to look at an area. Bobby Bring up Bobby Abreu is fly to left lined out to right on a great catch which really was a trap but Bragg pulled it off and then singled up the middle to extend his hitting streak to 10 consecutive games. One ball and no strikes to Abreu. Hey, he comes out of Crestwood, Illinois. He'll be 27 years of age in six days. One ball and one strike to Abreu. Eight seven Boston leading. We are in the seventh inning. Ball on the outside corner, one and two to count to Abreu. How's this one out of play? Still one and two. Sold out here at Fenway Park tonight. They were sold out at 6 o'clock tonight. Now big crowds on this road trip at Wrigley Field, now at Fenway Park. Bray stays alive at 1 and 2. Strikes that will retire the side. Phil's got a run in the inning. Two hits, no errors, leaving one. 8 7 Boston as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Now it's time for a Nissan sports break. Let's go back to the Comcast Sportsnet studios and Michael Barkin. Well, it's 8 7 Boston as we move to the eighth inning, and Rich Garces will come into pitch. So he is 20th game. He's 1 1 loss, none, one save. A good ERA of 2 1 2. 34 innings, 23 hits, 8 earned runs. He has struck out 32 while walking 16. And opponents are hitting just 187 against him. Has a pretty good curveball. We saw him in spring training in a game when the Red Sox came over to Clearwater, and he picked up a save that afternoon. And uh, you see what opponents are batting, just 187 against him. And right-handed hitters, just 171. He's real tough on right-handers. Six feet tall, he's listed at 215. When was that? <laughs> when he's about 12? <laughs> Kevin Jordan will be the first one to face him. KJ as a DH is two for three with a single and a double. One strike to him. He said he played volleyball when he was in high school. So that was a long time ago before he was a volleyball player. This with a slider.
Now he's trying to set up Gordon, and the Phillies uh, down by a run here. Popped him in the air. Mike Benjamin drifting out. Kevin Jordan retired. Well, we've got two fireworks nights when the Phillies take on Milwaukee. Friday, July 3rd, Saturday, July 4th. A spectacular aerial fireworks show. Compliments of Mellon PSFS. Right after those games on the 3rd and the 4th, order your tickets by calling 215-463-1000 or stop by the new Center City location, the Pennsylvania Convention Center at 12th and Arch Streets. One ball and no strikes to Mark Lewis. Tom Gordon out of their bullpen is tied for league lead in saves with Troy Percival. So he's been pretty good. He's only blown, I think, one save opportunity, hasn't he? I think so. There is. Is that Gordon? Yeah, there he is out yeah. there in the bullpen. See that hard breaking ball that Garces just threw? It's more like a curveball, but a real hard one. Well hit. This game could be tied, and it is. Out of here, home run, Mark Lewis. Jumped on a hanging, breaking ball, and the Phils have come all the way back to tie it at eight here in the eighth inning. Right, and that's huge because that takes Gordon out of the game for a while. A high breaking ball, and Mark Lewis hits it over that screen in left field. Well, this team's amazing. I mean, they're down 8-3, and... Look like there's no chance the way the Red Sox were swinging the bats, and Terry says they are now all the way back with that homer by Mark Lewis. There it goes over everything. Mark Lewis is fifth of the year. Pops up Alex Arias and Mike Benjamin will take care of that one. That's two down. And it'll bring up Doug Glanville. Glanville is walked grounded into a double play, struck Number out and lined out. Phillies have uh, Yorkus Perez and Mark Leiter up in their bullpen. As Kurt Schilling has pitched through seven. Round ball is shortstop, Garcia Parra. There's none left. We go to the bottom of the eighth. We're tied. At Fenway Park, we're moving into extra innings. Tied at 8-8. Eight, eight. Kevin Jordan will lead it off, and Tom Gordon is the new pitcher, their closer. Red Sox are 3-0 and oh here in extra inning games at Fenway Park, 4-2 and two overall. Foul tips the fastball. Gordon appearing in his 38th game. He has great numbers. Four and one, 23 saves and 24 opportunities. 174 ERA. 41 in the third innings. 22 hits and eight earned runs. 35 strikeouts, 14 walks. Opponents are hitting 154 against him. He's a reluctant relief pitcher, but it's turned his career around. He struggled as a starter. Fastball and a good curveball. There is that good curveball. One ball and two strikes. He uses a curveball almost all the time when he's ahead in the count. And he got ahead of Jordan here, one and two. He's really tough on right handed batters with that hook. This with at that time, two and two to count to Kevin Jordan. And Wayne Gomes threw a heck of a breaking ball, too, to end that last inning. He was not going to give in with a fastball. Fouled off the fastball. It's still two and two. See what happens with it. When you threat of the curveball that he has, and Kevin Jordan can hit anybody's fastball, but he's protecting against that breaking ball now, and he got a late swing on a fastball. There's Gomes. He did another good job tonight. He's really grown up a lot. You can count on him now. Yeah, he is he has been good late in games. Just missed full count. Oh, they trust him. I mean when you use him in those kind of situations, the way you're using Gomes now, that means the manager has a lot of confidence in him. Oh. 
pokes it into center field, base hit, Kevin Jordan. Well, he's a good hitter. He got a 3-2 fastball there, broke his bat, and still fought it off and got himself a hit. Here it is. It's a 3-2 heater, and you see it comes in off the trademark base hit. He'll be taken out for a pinch runner. Kevin Sefcik will come in to pinch run. Please are six and three in extra inning games. Red Sox are four and two in extra inning games, three and oh here at Fenway. Mark Lewis has not sacrificed yet this year. Lewis is 0 for 2 or 1 for 3 with a sacrifice fly and a game tying home run in the eighth inning. Move over to first and they're trying to see whether or not Lewis would show bunt. They're looking for bunt here. He is around to bunt and takes it low for a ball, one and nothing. Lewis is 2 for 8 lifetime off Gordon with a double. Couple of walks and two strikeouts. Kevin Sefcik is back. It's made an obvious bunt situation, so the third baseman Valentin Valentin is coming down the line hard. Lewis needs to try and bunt this ball first base side. He does. Gets it down to first base to Mo Vaughn, who tags out Lewis. Sacrifice is good. It goes three unassisted. Moving Sefcik to second base and bringing up Alex Arias. Nice job by Mark Lewis. First time this year he's been called on to sacrifice, and he gets it done. Number 26, the shortstop, Alex Arias. Arias is two for four with a single and a double. Inside with a fastball, one ball and no strikes. Good catch by Hatterberg, two balls and no strikes. Been pretty impressive behind the plate tonight. Handled the knuckleballer well, and he's had a couple of tough plays in the dirt with runners on base and yeah, yes. made them all. Two and one to Alex Arias. Got Glanville waiting on deck. with it three and one line dry but it's hooking foul oh he crushed that ball but foul <laughs> trying to do a Carlton Fisk but that ball had a lot of hook on it. Boy, Gordon made a, a risky pitch and got away with it. He comes down and in to Alex Arias, and the ball hooked the whole way. So a full count to Arias. Sepsic at second base and one out here in the 10th. Fills with two men on base, one out for Doug Glanville. See them on the phone of the bullpen, the manager Jimmy Williams. Gordon pitched an inning yesterday in, uh, in Tampa. So they probably don't want to go more than an inning with him. 
Got the save for Pedro Martinez. Right, that game against the Devil Rays. Gordon, up until just two years ago, was still Number a starter. Six, the and there's that left hander, Barkley, we were talking about. And then last year, Boston started using him a little bit as a relief pitcher. And then this year, he's come into his own as a real good closer. Doug Glanville is 0 for 4 with a walk tonight. Curveball. Miss with it. Doug Glanville, 2 for his last 20 after being incredibly hot. So he was due to have a little down period. And, you know, you'd look for him to get his bat on the ball here somewhere. And the curveball. Kerrigan must have told him to use his deuce. Two balls and no strikes to Glanville. Well, and good discipline by Doug to stay off them, too. That's a hard curveball to stay off. It's a lot easier to stay off it when you're ahead in the count. Fastball grounded in the whole base hit. Let's see if they're going to try to wave Sefcik around. They are O'Leary's throw, and he's out at home plate. The John Vukovic gambled and lost as Sefcik is nailed at home plate. O'Leary to Hatterberg. Well, in this ballpark, the left fielder is up really close no matter what. It's not like in a normal park where your outfielders are deep. There's the hit we thought Glanville was about due for. But look how close O'Leary is. And as Harry said, he gambles. Perfect throw. Sefcik tries to run. Hatterberg over a nice effort by Kevin Sefcik because he's out by 10 feet and that was his only hope. That's a great throw. I mean, it's right on line. And it brings up Greg Jeffries. There's a base hit. Now we're going to see if trying to score is Arias to throw to the plate and he is going to score as Jeffries singles in a go ahead run. <laughs> It's easier the other way because they got to play a little deeper. And plus the outfielder has to go to his left on that play to Darren Lewis. Greg Jeffries hooks this ball just enough to the left on a curveball there. That it's a tougher place. He has to throw across his body. Can't get as much on it. And the throw is way late. And that makes everybody real happy on that Phillies bench. Especially Gomes. He's a pitcher of record. <laughs> Mark Leiter is up in the bullpen. He will come on. With the Phillies taking a 9 to 8 lead. Scott Rowland will try to increase that lead, lays off the breaking ball. Craig Jeffrey is doing a really good job this year for the Phillies, and especially with runners in scoring position. Yeah, he came into the game hitting 347 with runners in scoring position. That was a big hit, especially after the Phillies had a runner thrown out at the plate. Right. Roland is one for three. Two balls and no strikes. This is not a save opportunity for Gordon coming in, but as Harry mentioned, he's only blown one save this year, so you're looking at a guy who's done a terrific job for the Red Sox. He's had three hits off him, and opponents were hitting just 154 against him coming in. At the fastball over, two and one. Well, they've done a lot of good things in this inning. I mean, you have a guy get a bunt down who hasn't done it all year. And that being Lewis to get the runner into scoring position. Three balls and a strike to Roland, and Rico Bronia waits on deck. Bills lead at 9-8, trailed in this game 8-3 after five innings of play. After originally leading three to nothing. Ooh. Scott thought it was low, probably was, but call the strike, full count. Take a look at it. Pretty good. Full count to Roland. Struck him out. And that will retire the side. But the Phils get a go-ahead run here in the 10th. One run, three hits, no errors, two men left. We go to the bottom of the 10th, 9-8.
Bottom half of the 10th inning here at Fenway Park. Phillies lead by a score of 9-8. to eight. Ruben Amaro has come into play left field. And the new pitcher is Mark Leiter coming on for Wayne Gomes. Good job by Gomes. Went one in the third innings, one hit, no runs, two strikeouts, no walks. And now it's in the hands of Leiter to try to save it for Gomes. Leiter is appearing in his 35th game. Two wins, two losses, 13 saves, and 16 save opportunities. A 3.07 ERA. 44 innings, 33 hits, 15 earned runs. He has struck out 44 and walked 20. There's Gomes, who has a vested interest in this half inning. He did his job tonight. He could win his sixth ball game out of the bullpen. Well, Wayne Gomes is one of the – there's a lot of success stories on this team this year. To my mind, he's one of the biggest ones because he's a guy that took his career into his own hands this offseason and worked like a dog day after day with Jeff Cooper and Mark Anderson and came to camp in great shape, giving himself a chance to compete, and he's done a terrific job this year, and he deserves a lot of credit. He got through the meat of that Red Sox order. Two, three, four, and five guys in the ninth inning. So now um, Leiter will face the six, seven, and eight. John Ballantin has lined out, singled, homered, and grounded out. High fly ball into shallow center field. Glanville lopes in. One out on one pitch. And it'll bring on Scott Hatterberg, the catcher. Hatterberg is 0 for 3 with a walk. Number 10, the catcher, Scott Hatterberg. Last ball is high, one ball and no strikes. Doing nothing to Hatterberg. Need Bray Cummings has moved into the on deck circle. X Phil to bat for Mike Benjamin. Two balls and a strike. it out of play. Two and two to count to Hatterberg. Bills lead 9-8. Bottom half of the 10th inning. Wide a full count. Phillies have Rico Bronio on the line at first, trying to take any extra base hit away from this left handed batter. Rolling off the line at third, as you see there. Fouls off another pitch, still three and two to Hatterberg. That's two down here in the 10th inning, and it will bring on Midre Cummings to bat for Mike Benjamin. Mark Leiter with a high fastball, and he gets him to chase it. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Midre Cummings has had some odyssey since he was released by the Phillies. He was in Cincinnati in spring training. Phillies saw him with Cincinnati. Next thing you know, they saw him in a Red Sox uniform during the spring. He's hitting at 286 as a pinch hitter. He is 6 for 14 with a home run and five runs batted in. So he's done a good job coming off the bench. Went 
and nothing to Midre Cummings. Two balls and no strikes. Buford do up next. Popped him up, should be the ball game. Scott Rowland waits in foul ground and squeezes it. Bills win an extra innings by a score of nine to eight here at Fenway Park in Boston. A one, two, three save. For Mark Leiter, his 14th save of the year, and Wayne Gomes picks up his sixth win out of the bullpen. So the Phils win on the RBI hit by Greg Jeffries with two outs. Jeffries' third hit of the ball game as the Phillies here at Fenway came back from an 8-3 deficit to go on to win 9-8 here in 10 innings. Well, the Phillies continue playing good baseball and extra innings. The Phillies' record now in extra innings is now seven and three, including five and one on the road. Greg Jeffries is our Chevrolet player of the game. He got the game-winning hit in the tenth inning, one of his three hits on the night. What the Phillies' only extra inning game they've lost on the road is opening day. That's correct. Pretty amazing. That's correct. Opening day against those New York Mets. Boston loses their first extra inning game at home. They go to four and three as Wayne Gomes wins his sixth out of the bullpen. A good night here at Fenway Park in Boston for the fighting Phils who battle back once again. There's Wayne Gomes, a happy guy, along with a, all his teammates. That's a nice win here tonight. Yes, it was. Phillies first here at Fenway Park, and the Phillies now three and two. On this road trip to two tough cities, Wrigley Field, Chicago, and Fenway Park, Boston. 9-8 final fills and 10 inning. We'll be back with a recap right after these messages.